All right, special guest is Victor, uh, one of the owners of Worldwide Corals, coming here to tell us about the top 10 most useful critters, also yep. known as inverts yep. uh, for your tank. So uh, some of these you might know about, some of them you might not, some of them they actually do things you didn't know about. Let's find out. Starting with number one is snails, and we have a few of them. What are the uh, snails that you like? I mean, I feel like um, snails, you can, I've seen people without snails on the tank, to me it's crazy. You're gonna be cleaning your glass all the time. Your rocks aren't gonna get a lot of unwanted algae. If you have a bare bottom, it's gonna grow algae on the bare bottom as well. Uh, we like Mexican snails, mm -hmm. the big turbo snails. Those big, huge guys? Yeah, Astra snails from the Keys, margarita snails. All snails in general. I think your snails is one of those things you have to have in your tank. If you watch them, you kind of like, can watch their behavior, which is there's this big mouth just going. They just, don't stop eating. Know, yeah, just, just cleaning every surface of like algae and stuff that like you didn't even know existed. Yeah. You know, uh, specifically for me on the rocks and stuff, they're getting in little nooks and crannies, just like stopping the problem before it ever even started. That's why I like to get different type of snails because some of them, they're different sizes, they get in different places. Someone can flip themselves over on their own, some they don't, and then they get eaten by your copper band or by your peppermint shrimp, might get a hold of them and eat them. So one thing, I always look forward to replacing some of your critters every two or three months. You, you can't just, most people get mad. They think they buy 20 snails and you have 20 snails in your tank. It doesn't work that way. Mm. Two months later, you might have three, you know? So I always look forward to replenish them. I, I mean, it's, it's true. The trochus, on the other hand, uh, if you can get the right ones, uh, actually replace themselves. <laughs> They're breeding your tank. Yes. Yeah. Little, you get little ones just popping everywhere. Yeah, you might find out you have too many. Uh, they become a problem. Uh, they start trucks. covering your, like, <laughs> your drain. I've seen them where they're like too much in pico tanks. Uh, and there's right tools for my job too here. Like for me, those Mexican turbo snails, like those things are like voracious eaters. But I also kind of think of them as like bulldozers because they tend to like push things around. Yeah, when they too. die, they can become a problem in your tank too. Yeah, I have seen they, people put too many in the tank and they get a die off. Well, yeah, you know what? I've seen that many times too. Back in the day when algae was a bit, bit more problem, you know, they throw 30 of these things in there and they would eat all of it, but then they starve to death. And basically, like one of the things you don't think about is when they're starving to death, they start consuming their own tissue. And then when they're consuming their own tissue, they're like now kind of pooping their own tissue back out into the water eventually. And they become these like little nutrient batteries that are just slowly releasing nutrients into the water. Or then when they just finally kick the bucket, all of that tissue just breaks up. And goes when, on to feed the algae again. And when you see a dead Mexican snail, if you ever smell one, mm. when you, you ever lift them inside the tank and a little black thing comes out of them, that is the worst smell you can smell on a fish tank, period. I don't care why have you smell. I'm, I'm not okay. gonna tell you the whole story, but the worst for sure, dead carpet anemone. For real? Worse than a, than a dead Mexican snail? <laughs> Dude, I, I had to wear a gas mask. I, I pulled it out of the tank and immediately dropped it on the floor. Uh, it was uh, just it was like so bad. The worst rotten in snow. Oh, yet. and then I couldn't go back down there without the gas mask. Uh, <laughs> it was actually even worse than I just described. Live and learn. I, I don't want to gross everybody else out. Uh, all right, so then the next one is hermits. So uh, hermits here is blue legs, red legs. What are they great for? They're great for all the unwanted detritus on your floor. Getting in between the rocks and just pulling those little dust pockets where the snail is not gonna wanna go in there, they start digging. So I got this 80 gallon water box tank in my office and I use calcium reactor media and it's about an inch thick. And when you look through the front of the glass, you see the actual blue legged hermit crabs just removing the rocks, getting on there and the rocks are on top of them and they're just digging for the dirt. It's the coolest thing to watch. I well, think it's one of those Critters that you have to have in your tank. Well, now you're talking about like a like well, like, um, a, like a, a thing that has eyeballs. You know, it can, yeah. Like seek these things out. Like the snails is kind of like, you know, I don't know, sniffing it out, you're stumbling feeling. into it, whatever. Uh, the like crab man is like a little bit more of a sentient being in the essence. Yeah. Like it knows what it wants and it's gonna go find it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my favorite ones are definitely the blue-legged hermit crabs. I feel like they're great workers. If you want someone a little more aggressive, will be the red-legged red Mexican uh, hermit crabs. They're very, very aggressive. They will eat your snails. They will eat all the hermit crabs, but they're the most affordable ones and they work the hardest. They're not as pretty as the blue-legged hermits. Then you got other ones like the Halloween hermit crabs, you know, the electric blue um, If you have crab. a mi microscope. Uh, and for me, like, uh, you, if you, so, you see those pictures of them like uh, on the internet, you're like, 
oh yeah, I definitely want to have the ones that have those colors. But they're so small, man. When you see them in person, man, yeah. you gotta really be looking to see the yeah. color patterns. Yeah, there's some other bigger ones actually. The electric blue hermit crabs and the the Halloweens are a little bigger. They're cool. They're very expensive, and then they die, and they don't do much in the reef other than just hang out. Well, so you know, one of the things is like if you say, oh well, you know, the crabs are eating the snails and whatever, like. That's the circle of life, man. That's what they yeah. do in the ocean, too. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, like, it's not like you're putting these things in there and killing them. It's just part of what they do. Like, yeah. the fish, man, we're feeding them shrimp, you know? Uh, like, that's what they eat. Yeah. Uh, they happen to not be alive at the time, the yeah. shrimp, but, but that's uh, what you're feeding them. it doesn't make it any difference as a result of what was going on. So, uh, next one here is cleaner shrimp, one of my favorites. I love them. I mean, what can I say? I can't say enough of those things. They clean your fish. They look great. They're affordable. They're hearty. They're pretty. They're they're always in the right spot, you know, especially when you feel a love how they start floating. Mm -hmm. What cooler than when you put your hand and they start cleaning your hand? Mm -hmm. they're, just great for, they're just great for um, for fish parasites. That's basically it. I just think it's one of the, the critters that you have to have in your tank. So I wouldn't say that like this is going to like eradicate ick or something from your tank, but like you wrote down, it eats the flukes and eradicate. No, keep the stuff down. Yes. yes. Uh, and so like, and it's one of the cool, like anytime you can see a behavior that you would naturally see in the ocean, it's just cool. Yeah. Right? And so like when you are snorkeling and you see like the fish stop by and see the cleaner rest, you know, picking it out or the, or the cleaner shrimp too, you know, going after cleaning the, the fish. It's just cool. And then when you go see it at home, even cooler. Right? Yeah. That's natural behavior. Now, I will say not every cleaner shrimp will do that in an aquarium. Uh, and they won't all do it day one. Uh, but a lot of times over time, they will pick up the behavior. And it's not just that the shrimp picks up the behavior, but the fish picks up the behavior to go. To yeah, the they go to the shrimp and they open the mouth and you see them like they're just picking with a little twister and there's just like, like someone just at work, like someone cutting your hair or something like that. That's one of the coolest things, actually. You've seen the, there's a, a pretty popular photo out there of cleaner shrimp, our video, actually, cleaning the mouth of an eel. You know, yes. the eel opens up and he's just like, You think the eel's going to be like, okay, you did the service, I'm hungry now. Mm -hmm. They know, but it's just a symbiotic relationship. Yep. They help each other out. All right, next one, emerald crabs. Emerald crabs, uh, you guys seen them, man. Um, Make sure that emerald crab is an emerald crab is, is green and shiny on his uh, body. If it's fuzz, fuzzy, it's no good. It's not if an it's emerald what? crab. Fuzzy. Fuzzy. Like oh, he's got little hairs everywhere. Oh, like yeah, kind of like a gorilla crab? Uh, yeah, and yeah. a lot of people think that you're buying an emerald crab and they're selling you a gorilla crab. It should be green, hard, smooth. Shape. Yeah. And they're known for eating bubble algae. Mm -hmm. And bubble algae, once it starts popping in your tank, it can be pretty aggressive. So I, I would say this is a great preventative solution. I haven't seen a lot of people solve existing bubble algae problems by throwing an emerald crab in. Yes, yeah, you have to keep it ahead. But if you put them in there beforehand, they'll eat them before you ever even saw that they existed. Very good you say that. It's kind of like um, everything that you add in the tank is not to get rid of it. It's preventative. Mm -hmm. that's the way it should be ounce of prevention way better than a pound of cure yes exactly and i think um even with parasites uh when you got aptasia you think you're going to put like you were saying earlier four five six peppermints and your aptasias are going to be away they're going to go away if you have a giant aptasia that peppermint is going to look at that aptasia it doesn't want nothing to do with it it's just too big too aggressive so yeah prevention is the best way to do it so uh it just brings up a good point one of the uh elements of another uh, build series that I want to do in the future, I want to really hit in the beginning of curation, right? For as long as I've been in this hobby, people just kind of wing it. You know, they're like, they're going to a fish store and just kind of wing whatever they're going to put in there, yes. you know, by the day. And we'll always have some of that because like, you don't have to plan out every last coral, right? But with inverts and fish and stuff like that, I think we could do a way better job of saying, hey, what are the things that really excite my soul and that I'm really excited about? And then how do they play nice with each other? Yes. And what are the things that are in there? And then from this invert list, hey, what are the things that play nice with each other and serve a purpose? And like, I should put these things in there for sure to begin with so I'd never encounter this problem that everybody else has. Yes. You know? I think it, for someone like you, for me, it's a lot easier to do something like that because we have so much experience and hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. But for the beginner hobby, I think it will be a little bit harder because you're right, people get excited and there's no rhyme and reason for what they're getting. It's what catches their eye. 
They're not thinking, oh, I have a yellow tank and I'm going to put a yellow, a purple tank later and then they fight. If they would have done the research early enough. You know, one of the white ideas that Ellie and I had in the previous uh, episode of this is we talked about what if like the fish store had a better kind of curation service and like you'd have to know this existed and go talk to somebody but like hey you're starting a new tank i'm gonna go put you with jerry over here jerry's gonna walk through you know your 100 gallon tank you know like tell me some of the fish you like i'll tell you some of the ones that work that don't work uh and then what we're going to do for you is we're going to order some of those fish for you every single month for the next year or next six months or whatever and provide a curation service of Hey, like we all know that these are the things you're you're like, and we're gonna bring them in for you, fresh from wherever. They're not gonna sit, you know, in the holding bins and stuff. So they'll be healthy, and they'll be things that you like, you know. White glove service. You know? And well, and then like for the fish store, you know, also bravo because now you got a customer that is gonna be with you. <laughs> you have, you essentially yes. got all of their fish business for the yes. next six months or exactly. year, or whatever. But for the the pet owner or the aquarium owner, also. Like, I'm not just winging it, hoping for the best. You've really helped me do this right. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I want to say out of 10 hobbies, one will have that approach. They're very, like, they come with a list and they've been doing the research. Mm -hmm. The other nine, unfortunately, it's excitement. It's, everyone is just jumping right on it. They don't, they woke up, they saw a tank yesterday, and they look it up, and today's the new idea, and they go get a box, and they get it wet. You know what's funny? I was one of those nerds in the first tank. We I, all were. I, I planned it all out, right? I had oh, you were. Fish. I was going to say I wasn't. I was the opposite. And to the point, this is how how bad I was about it. Uh, I ordered some fish from Marine Depot Live. Okay. Uh, that dates me a little bit because that was so long ago. Okay. Uh, that hasn't existed in a long time. Uh, and I ordered a Randall's Gobi, and uh, they sent me a Rainford's Gobi. Okay. You know, Rainford's just like a yeah, yeah, little I know what it is. fish. It just eats filament. Like a really. Hector Gobi, similar. Yep. The same yeah. family. Okay. I got it, and the first thing I did is I brought it back to the fish store, and I said, hey, man, can I trade this for credit because it doesn't fit my list? And the guy looked at me like I was high. Like, it that doesn't fish, fit your list. That, will list. that fish will live with everything. But I was trying to fit this, like, mantra back then. There was, like, you could have, like, one inch of fish for every gallon or something. Oh, too, you, know? you were like, crazy. You're one of those analytical guys that is busting out the calculator. <laughs> yes, yes, I was. I mean, I was so I mad. I know that's right. And like, and then He's a researcher for sure. Later on in life, I was like, why did I return that Rainford go? Because <laughs> she goes, say sorry to that guy. Could You're easily, my present. Easily live with all the other fish that are in there. Tone, thank you for dealing with me, man. Oh, uh, that's so funny. Uh, okay, the next one here is peppermint shrimp. Good for a lot of things. Yeah, they're good to keep your optaceous away, and they're really good for just eating all the unwanted stuff that is in your reef. I mm -hmm. think they're very cheap. Don't put too many. I don't know. You got a 100-gallon tank. Keep two or three of them in there. It's like the preventive thing. Mm -hmm. You will introduce an optaceous sooner or later, mm -hmm. but if you introduce and there's a peppermint in there, the peppermint will find it as food, and that optaceous will never reproduce. You'll never so, see them spread. Yes. I mean, you, you say you like peppermints as well. You used them before. Yeah, so uh, my I would I would say that uh, the mirror your council, which is put those things in there from the beginning, right? And so you have the peppermint shrimp; they're living there, hanging upside down, doing their thing, uh, and then you just like probably won't have this problem because they'll go find uh, the aptasia that you put in there by accident. Uh, I will give you the opposite counsel though is if you have this like explosion of aptasia in your tank and you like never treated it and finally now it's everywhere and you finally want to get rid of it i will not find three apta or three peppermint shrimps that could be your solution no man. even if you put 20 of them yeah. the aptasias are going to outgrow the, the you shrimp. need a lot of them and they're probably not a lot of them are going to make it in the end either yeah uh, but like you got a problem that took you a year to get into it's going to take a year to get out yeah, and one thing worth mentioning too, if you do add peppermints on the regular into your reef, make sure you're feeding daily. If you, you're one of those people that feed once a week or you're like, oh, the fish look good and you forget to feed because you're too busy, I promise that. you that peppermint will come out and peppermints eat anything. I'm sure you can put a piece of bread in there and they will eat it. <laughs> there, there's scavengers, they, they seem to eat like anything. So just, if you don't feed, they're going to come out they're going to start picking on your LPS and you don't want that. So in a previous episode, we actually also talked about for a peppermint shrimp, you had that cool tip of if you have vermited snails, when you break them all off with your hand, mm. then they all come back, but they don't come back if... If you, if you got the peppermints in there because they get to eat them because it's just open meat for them. It's just like a meal that is sitting there. The vermited snails was being protected by his shell, by the little hard shell, that little tube that they create, and the peppermint cannot get in there. 
Now, when you break it, the tube worm is exposed and the peppermint goes to town. I've never heard that before today, and you made my day. There you uh, go. I can't now wait you know. to go try that. Uh, yeah. All right. The next one is a harlequin shrimp. Yeah. Uh, I just think they look beautiful. They do. And they're great to keep your asterinas uh, from the reef away. And what some people do is they freeze um, a chocolate starfish and they cut the legs and they feed him uh, one leg every week. I didn't know that you could feed them like uh, dead like that. Yes, you can. Oh, I always thought that they had to actually eat. The yeah, that's thing what alive. I used to think too. And I know I said that on the video earlier. I'm sorry for that, guys. But yeah, you can freeze uh, the leg and you little chop a leg and you feed him the leg per week. But that's yeah. the only thing that they eat, period. Yep. Starfish. But like, so that kind of bridges the gap. If you're using the Harlequin to get rid of your Asterina star uh, snails, you can use it also. You can feed them with the, the chocolate chip. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so now some of you might be like, oh, are you trying cutting off this thing's arm to feed it or feeding the starfish? Like, again, every single thing in here, man, eats some type of protein. Uh, almost all of them. They're yeah. all eating a shrimp or something in the wild. They're doing their tank. And that's, that's the only thing they eat on their diet. So if we don't feed them that, the shrimp in the ocean is eating that thing alive. I mean, unfortunately, it's go, just Go read the ingredients life. of your fish food. It was alive at one point in time. You just didn't have to do it. Yeah. It's a circle of life. We do it. They do it. It's part of what goes on. Uh, next one. This is probably one of the most underappreciated, actually, which is urchins. You got tuxedos, Halloween, uh, long spine, pin cushion. Do you have some different ones for different tools, or are they all just pretty good? Uh, they're, all, they're all pretty good. It's just keep your rock nice and purple. Mm -hmm. It gets rid of all the unwanted algae. They're great algae eaters. A lot of people don't use them. We've been using them more and more lately. They can be a pain when you're reaching into something. You might get poke if you didn't see him that he was there. But it's something I highly recommend for people to use. I find that they actually spread coralline algae. Like they'll eat the coralline algae and like it, I mean, this might be just anecdotal, but it seems like they're kind of pooping out the spores and spreading it around. I never noticed that. Yeah, like it, because it, like, because they will eat the coralline algae, but it seems after you put them in there to come back faster and in other areas. Might be anecdotal, uh, but it suddenly definitely seems that way. Cool. Uh, but you'll see them eat the algae uh, off of, Things that otherwise nothing else will eat. Oh, yeah. You will see their trail. Like You know that the, the nasty algae is like a welfare, welfare algae? It's like this brownish, reddish that it just encrusts all over the rocks. They'll eat that. Oh, really? That stuff? Yeah, that, like the, the, like a, yeah it, looks like like, a it looks like coralline almost. Like You cannot remove it. You, can't you have to it scrape off. it. Yeah. You literally have to grab a screwdriver and scrape and you see like lines of it. Ugly, ugly stuff. They eat that yeah. stuff. What is, I don't even know what it's called. Uh, but yeah, they'll eat almost anything. Uh, they, be, prior to fluconazole and stuff, they were one of the solutions for bryopsis. Yeah. Or partial solutions anyway. Yeah. But uh, if you got algae problems, man, uh, urchins are very, very often. They sure are. No, the only problem is, is those guys are kind of strong. And so they will push corals over. Oh, they, they, they walk around with little frags. They stuck attach them to them. little snails. Uh, we once in a while, we see like a hermit crab just kind of upside down. Stuck Trying to, to get out, yeah. Uh, we've seen them where they have taken a, 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 like a, anemones on a walk. No. You know? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty funny. Okay, next one is uh, sand cleaners. So you got your Nasaria snails, uh, Cirrus snails, sand sifting stars, uh, uh, conchs, those things. So uh, give me some examples of these, like Nasaria snails. I just love how they go under the sand. You don't even know you have them. Mm -hmm. And then when you feed, you see all these things come out. Uh, it keeps your sand there all the time. It keeps it clean. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't keep this... Um, these things in your sand, you're going to be struggling with a lot of uh, detritus, uh, red slime, uh, if, or you have to do it yourself. You have to siphon the, the sand every time you do a water change. If you have enough of these critters, you don't have to siphon your sand. Okay. I got to tell you, I don't believe in leaving your sand alone entirely because like it just becomes the, you know, like it's cat bad. box or the landfill of the tank. You can stir it up and you can see the pollution. Man. Oh, and it's bad. It out. can crash the tank. I've seen people move a rug and there's so much cloud that it comes out. And... Yeah. Okay. Uh, so at one point we were talking about, you know, cleaning the sand, but I got news for you. I don't have the patience to it's get a lot of down work. there. And then like, I end up always wanting to do way too much. And like, it sucks the sand. Yeah. Well, well, no, like I don't believe that you should turn over the whole sand bed because you're like disrupting the whole microbiome. You got to do certain areas at the time. You should like do 10% of it every time. 
I just don't got the patience for it. I always end up doing like a third of it at the tank at a time. And it's just, I don't think it's good for the tank to turn over all that microbiome. Every that time way. you clean too much, you strip too much. If you were to clean your sump, if you were to clean your sand, water change, replace your filter socks, crank up the skimmer, it's not a good thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm really leaning towards this. You know, you got your uh, Nasaria snails, so those guys that are just cruising around underneath the sand bed. You'd never even know they're there until it's feeding time. The yeah. Tube comes up and then they like it's erupt. cool, right? Yeah, they erupt from the sand. Uh, your Sarah snails are kind of cleaning the top of it a lot of the yeah. time. Uh, then you have your sand sifting stars, and so uh, sand sifting star literally is usually called that you know, when you're buying them. But it's a little star that lives on the you know they're usually about this big, right? You barely see them. Yeah, yeah. they just kind of live on the top and they just kind of scoot around and eat the garbage off the top. Uh, I do you think that serpent and uh, brittle stars also serve a similar No, function? I have that in the list, but they're different. Okay, so you don't uh, so, think they're doing so, for sand? So, no, if you, if you look at the sand, I don't know if you notice, that actual starfish buries himself inside the sand. Oh, okay, yeah. Yes. I've seen them because kind of, they kind of erupt, but a lot of time they see them on the top, but they will go down in there Yeah, as well. they're literally, sometimes you don't even know. You're very similar to a, uh, an Asarius now. Okay, and then a conch, actually. Uh, Malachi here takes care of a lot of the tanks, really loves conchs. They're just, they're just great workers, same thing. They're just constantly going inside the sand and they're just cleaning. Just, I, I couldn't tell you specifically what they do different, but by having the variety of all three or four of them, it keeps the sand bed clean. Okay, sand sifting. Uh, we're not talking about fish today, but no. like in that conversation, the sand sifting fish, they're obviously turning this over. And so if you have a whole bunch of little critters turning the sand over all the time, I don't need to do this because no. their, fil their food is the stuff I very much want to remove. Yes, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, sadly, I want to put some sand fifteen uh, in my in my tank, but the arena weed tile fish will eat them almost certainly, so I can't. <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of cool fish in that tank. Uh, next one <laughs> is the serpent and brittle stars we just talked about. Uh, you say excellent scavenger and very active under the rocks to keep things moving. Yeah, so I think they're a great addition for looks in the tank. I think they look really cool, especially when you feed and you see them like crawling oh, to come out yeah. and trying to reach the tentacle and stuff like that. But they're really good, kind of like what the peppermints do, to eat all the unwanted food that is just left. A lot of times I go to people's tanks and when they feed, they feed too much. A lot of it goes in the sand, in the rocks. It goes into the overflow. And for those people that overfeed, I highly recommend having a few of these starfish in there. They're mm -hmm. just great too. They just, they got such a long tentacles, they can get inside rocks. They can dig everywhere they want to. I haven't thought about this as before until yeah. just now, but like if you have like a rock work where you stacked all the rock against the back or, or it has like a network of holes that aren't really accessible, great option to go clean areas that you couldn't clean for yourself. Yeah, that's what they do. Again, they're just scavenger hunters, you know, they're cleaners. Same as uh, the peppermint, but with a different body shape and they're able to reach different yeah, areas. Than those big giant arms just like sweeping for food all yeah. over the place. Yeah. And then you got the uh, the other one, the, uh, so you got the, the regular sun sift, um, I'm sorry, you got the... Um, uh, serpent brittle? The serpent brittle that has got the little arms within the arm. Mm. So it's like they're going out and they're just feeling everything. Okay. I right. love them, especially right. the red serpent star. It's one of the prettiest ones. Okay, this one's an interesting <laughs> one too. The sand cucumber. I feel like it's another one very mm. similar to what we're saying with the sand sifter cleaners. You can never go wrong by having cucumbers. They're very harmless. harmless. They don't bother no one. They're inexpensive. The sand ones. There's big, like, colorful ones that you'd avoid. Uh, those, yeah. Those, yeah, no, you don't yeah. want those. You want the good old little brown ones, mm -hmm. grayish ones. And they just seem to pick up the sand. They filter it through, and they, they drop, like, a little, we're going to say a little piece of poop in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just they just eat sand. And, and they turn it into a piece of poop. tunnel around and turn it around. So it's the coolest thing. They eat it, and then they poop it out the back They're really quick, but it's clean. It's like a filtration system of some sort. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you guys uh, ever heard of, you certainly ever heard of, but a buttfish? No. You've never heard of the buttfish? Buttfish? Yeah. No. Okay, so. <laughs> we uh, always learn something new around here, guys. Uh, my buddy got a tank, man, and set it up and didn't put any fish in. And one day, he's like, there's a fish in here. And they're like, it, it just it was a brand new tank. And I'm like, dude, do you have a cucumber? And he's like, yep. Like you got a butt fish, man. These are fish that live in the butt of a cucumber, 
right? They dart in there and they live inside there and they, they're just like these little fish about this big. Uh, you got me, he's got me confused right now. I'm yeah, going to have to talk to him. I know, it's the craziest thing. Because when I bought my Tampa Bay saltwater, they, they, these things live down in the Keys. Uh, and so when I bought my Tampa Bay saltwater rock, I was hoping for one of these things. I got a school. whole bunch. <laughs> I know, that's way back. Uh, <laughs> and I, bought, I got a bunch of these cucumbers in there. I was hoping. But my buddy here got one, Brandon. And he thought it was the coolest thing ever. Because, like, I mean, it was like when you walked over this tank. So you like, see the fish? How did the fish miraculously come out of thin air? And it didn't. It came out of the cucumber. I'm going to look this up, guys. This is crazy. Uh, I will tell you, I saw that I, my, my TBS package came with a whole bunch of cucumbers in it. Uh, and they did exactly what you're talking about. And I kind of like actually forgot about these things. I think I'm going to go get some. Uh, they squ squirt around in the sand and they rapidly just devour the sand and poop it out. Okay. I had a weird look out for this one anomaly. I don't know why this happened to me, but I had a hang on. You remember those Promora Pro protein skimmers? Yes. The black one? Okay. And you had this like big mag drive pump hanging in the tank. Yes. Okay. I don't know what it was. It was like a siren song, dude. Those things would always live in the sand until I put that skimmer in there. And then they'd climb up the wall and they would climb up into the intake of the uh, skimmer no. and shred themselves into the skimmer. Okay, so then I put the overflow box attachment on there and then the thing would crawl over the overflow lips into the box, man. So into you really the thing. wanted to go in there. It really, something. something, man. And then I put egg crate wrapped in bird netting on the top of the thing. And? Still, man, found its way in there. Like the next one. I don't know, but that <clears throat> Meg Drive pump was saying, cucumber, come to me. Come to me. <laughs> I don't know. Shredded all over the tank. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, they did. They went through that sand constantly looking for stuff, eating it. And so to me, I'm starting to gravitate towards got to clean my sand. Don't want to do it with a siphon. How do I use critters like this to do that as well? And you know what the good news is? Is there's more of videos like this one with Victor. Thanks for coming. There's a whole playlist right here and you can see the next one right there. See you guys soon.